You got stuck in Cary. I did. I got stuck in Cary and threw it away. And my wife fished it out of the wastebasket and said that it was, she thought it was pretty good. And, and so as you just heard, Stephen King once threw Carrie, his breakthrough novel, in the bin. Stay watching to find out more about why and also to learn my seven takeaway lessons from Stephen King's book on writing. Welcome to The Write Channel, where we talk about creative writing, so please do make sure you subscribe and hit the notification button for more of this kind of video. My name's Nicola Monaghan, I'm a prize-winning British author, and today we're talking Stephen King. So this is my seven lessons, all the things, well not all the things, but seven of the things that I learnt when I read Stephen King's On Writing. So here we go, number one. Lesson number one is don't throw anything away. As you heard at the beginning of this video, Stephen King once threw Carrie in the bin and he did that for all sorts of reasons, in part because he wasn't sure he could do the idea justice because it was about teenage girls. He wasn't sure if he knew them well enough. He also found the character very dark and difficult and wasn't sure he wanted to spend that amount of time with her. And what actually happened was his wife, Tabitha, rescued the manuscript from the bin and told him to carry on with it. So we're really glad he did. Now, what I would say is not all of us are going to have that kind of massive success obviously ever necessarily but certainly not with the first thing we write but it is always worth saving stuff with my first proper manuscript the first novel I was writing that wasn't really a novel that was very all over the place and that actually I'm really glad never got published but I did rescue parts of it and there was one part that became a short story and another part where I teased out some of the characterizations and situations and storylines and in fact it became my second novel after a lot of hard work a lot more work went into it but I do think with most things there are some things in my bottom drawer that I never plan to publish and that I think that's probably true for most writers and I would say they belong there but also that I learn a lot from those manuscripts and I learn a lot from those mistakes so this is my first piece of advice and the first thing that I recognized in Stephen King's account of his life as a writer don't throw anything away you just never know so keep hold of it revisit it with fresh eyes and try to learn from it if nothing else now, lesson number two. Now, where I get this from in the book is that Stephen King, he started off and he was sending manuscripts out when he was really quite young, like 15. And he was getting rejections, as you might expect. Some writers might get rejections, throw their letter in the bin, get dejected and then just move on with their lives and do something different altogether. Stephen King didn't do that. Stephen King almost savoured every rejection. He got a nail in his room and he put the rejections on the nail. And over time, there were too many for the nail. So he got a spike and put the rejections on a spike. I think this is really telling of a, a massively professional and relentless attitude towards writing, which I think is one of the things that we actually need as writers. So I would say every rejection is a step along the way to that ultimate success where in fact someone will accept your book or they will offer to become your agent or your book will end up out there in one way or another. I know it's very hard not to take these things personally sometimes. I certainly know I have myself. And the rejection doesn't stop once you get published just because you've been published once, just because you have a novel, even if you have a prize winning novel, the rejection doesn't stop at that point. Every book has to be good enough. Every story has to be good enough. Otherwise, people won't publish it. So I think of rejections as being useful, constructive. Sometimes they are more constructive than other times when you get feedback on your work. And if an editor does take the time to put some feedback on your work and to tell you specifically what they think you need to improve, then that's really good because they don't do that all the time. And that's actually a really encouraging moment in your career. The first time you get the kind of letter where an agent doesn't just say no or send out a form rejection, but actually starts to help you develop develop as a writer and tell you what to do next. So my next lesson is about where you write and actually specifically my next lesson is that you can write absolutely anywhere. Now until recently I was literally sitting in the corner of my living room to write and then before that I'd often write in cafes, on the train, in libraries, anywhere where I could find a seat and put my computer and notebook down. So you literally can write anywhere and I think this is really backed up by this part of the book. This book has an interesting structure in that the first half is kind of a memoir and then the second half is a guide to writing and this bit is towards the beginning of the second half, the guide to writing. It's actually chapter three of the guide to writing and it's about where to write and what Stephen King tells us here is that when he was writing Carrie and Salem's Lot he didn't have a posh desk or a nice office with a beautiful chair or any of that 
he was literally sitting in his laundry room balancing a child's desk on his knee and that's where he wrote his breakthrough novel so for me the massive lesson from that is that you don't have to have a perfect place to write it doesn't have to have a comfy chair an amazing desk the perfect computer you don't need any of that what you need is yourself you need to feel comfortable Stephen King talks about having a place where you can close the door I don't think you necessarily literally have to close the door I know that I've definitely definitely worked in places where I haven't had a door to close but it's more about feeling psychologically comfortable and psychologically creating a bubble around you while you're writing. You might have heard that Virginia Woolf wrote that to be a writer you needed a room of your own. Well we don't all have a room of our own. Don't wait to have a room of your own. Carve some space in somewhere that perhaps is a slightly quieter part of the house. So for me, the living room worked quite well because although that isn't a quieter part of the house necessarily, during the day it was because people tended to hang out either in their own rooms or in the dining room. So the living room was a space that I actually pretty much had to myself. So find a space that you have access to and a time that you can access it in a way that works for you and just get on with it. If Stephen King can write such an amazingly successful best-selling novel, with a child's desk balanced on his knee, well then you can find a place that's gonna work for you, surely. Okay, lesson four is about dreams. And actually this kind of follows on from the last lesson. So one of the things that Stephen King did and he talks about here when he was successful is he built himself a massive dream office with a huge oak panel desk and a beautiful surround sound sound system. And actually he found he got drunk and wasted at that desk quite a lot. And it actually wasn't a particularly positive experience for him at all. So with success, he had the power and resources to create his dream space to write in. But when he got there, he found that he was completely wrong about what he needed to write. He ended up turning the space into more of a living area where he spent time with his kids. So he bought a smaller desk that was handmade, beautiful and perfect for him and found that he was much more productive. I think there's something important to be learnt here, not just about the space doesn't matter as much as you think it does or it perhaps doesn't matter in the way that you think it does, but also that dreams can be misleading. I mean, I'm not saying don't have dreams because obviously if you want to be a writer and a novelist, that probably is a dream in and of itself and you've probably got loads of dreams. And you're going to capture some of those dreams and put them down on paper for other people. So dreams are important, have dreams. But just be aware that stuff like, particularly materialistic dreams, they don't necessarily have any connection with writing. They don't necessarily have much of a connection with where the writing comes from. So it's not about that. It's not about that perfect space. It's not about that amazing agent who's going to get you all the success. And the work is the important part. That's what we're in this for. Because at the end of the day, we could probably earn more working in an office and doing a normal job. So you do this because you love it. You don't do this because you think you're going to get rich. I mean, I know Stephen King did, but that's not going to happen to everybody. But as I said, even though he got rich and he could have the office he wanted, he could have all the things he wanted, that didn't make him a happier writer, a more successful writer, a writer that found that they were more productive and that the words came like clockwork because this dream had been realised. So it's not about the dream desk, it's not about the dream agent, it's not about the dream publisher, it's not about the dream anything. It's about sitting down in that space and grafting and doing the work. So lesson number five is about the first draft. And you will see that Stephen King talks a lot about the first draft and in the book on writing, he even put some pages in there so you can see just how the editing works on a draft and how messy it all gets. And his main advice is to write your first draft quite quickly and satisfy yourself with a messy first draft. Now, by this, he doesn't mean that it would be just rubbish and that you're just putting anything down on the page. You try to make it as good as possible. But at the same time, you don't spend too much time trying to make it perfect. I've known writers and I've read about writers using very different methods of writing who are literally rewriting sentences and paragraphs and first chapters over and over again. And personally, for me, that would drive me insane. I think that's the path to hell. My advice and Stephen King's advice as well is to make sure you know what your story is going to be. Make sure you've got the momentum to write it and then actually write that first draft quite quickly in a couple of months. Then you put it aside and you look at it later and then you do your editing later. So relish writing a messy first draft. Allow yourself that luxury. Try to turn off your internal editor while you do that and get the words down in the first place. 
And that actually leads me on to my lesson number six, which is definitely related. And this is some of the advice that Stephen King had from one of his very first editors. Stephen King actually had a vaguely similar experience to me here in that he worked on a small local newspaper and he had an editor on the small local newspaper who taught him all he needed to know about writing. And that was really mostly that you cross out most of the words. And in fact, Stephen King again shows us some of the drafts from those early days days and just how much involvement his editor had and how much his editor crossed out and suggested that he changed. I had a really similar experience so I did my first work experience at the Nottingham Evening Post which is a small local newspaper and I wrote an article about someone called Austin Morris who was taken to court because he hadn't paid his car tax. There are all sorts of puns and stuff in there, not my puns, that was actually the reporter who'd given me the article to write who came up with all the puns but I wrote this article my original draft of the article was about a thousand words, possibly longer, and the final published piece was about 150 words. So that was my first big editing lesson. And Stephen King had similar lessons with the guy that he worked with. And this is what this editor told Stephen King about how to write. He told him, you should write with the door closed and edit with the door open. So what does that mean? Well, write with the door closed. That means you close out the world, not just physically. You can close it out physically. I mean, I'm in my office here and I'm closed off from the world. But it means more than that. It means close it off metaphorically. So at that point, don't think too much about your audience. And this is all connected to writing that messy first draft. You don't think about people reading this yet. All you do is get it down on paper and write it. It's like you've closed yourself off from the world. So metaphorically and possibly physically, write that first draft with the door closed. And then, of course, when you've got that first draft, that's when you need to edit. And when you edit, you need to open the door. You need to think about this being a piece of work that other people are going to read. You need to think about the fact that you'll have an audience for this piece of work, if you're lucky anyway, that other people are going to read it. And you need to put that into your head and try to make it as good as possible. So this is lesson number six, and I think it's stated in more or less these words in the actual book. And that is right with the door closed so that you can let the ideas flow and feel free to express yourself. And then open the door when you edit so you can make it as good as possible for other people's consumption. Oh, man, I have a, a lot of self-doubts. But the important thing is to push through, to not become depressed. And, you know, I try to remember we're all amateurs at this. And every mm. time that I sit down, it's like the first time um, I battle doubts all the time about whether or not this thing is working or that thing's working, whether or not the idea is good. My favourite part of this whole book is the very end, because the very end, I think, is extremely heartwarming. It's quite emotional. We read about Stephen King's accident, about all of the things that have happened to him, how he nearly stopped writing on a number of occasions. And one of the things he says is that he feels that writing on a number of levels saved his life. And you certainly get the sense of writing making his life so much better than it would have been otherwise and writing being something that he relied on and loved and really brought him through all the ups and downs of his actual life. And the message that I get from this and that I get through the book really is that as a writer one of the most important things to do is to keep on keeping on. I was actually told this by another writer, another local Nottingham writer called Alan Silito when I met him when I was younger and when my first novel was out and I think I didn't realise quite at the time how important it was. But as I mentioned before, the rejections don't stop. The difficulties of this job don't stop. There are a lot of people who would like to be published. There are a lot of people trying to get their work out there and be creative. If you want to make it as a writer and if you want to build a career and keep going, you're going to have to be quite relentless. You're going to have to be determined and keep going. So for me, this is probably the most important thing to keep on keeping on. And actually, if you can maintain the right kind of attitude towards writing, where it's actually putting the words on the page that are the most important thing, being creative and expressing yourself, finding something to say, making art, if you can make those kind of things your priority, if you can focus on the things you can control, like the words you put down on the page, rather than what people say about your book when it's out in the world, rather than whether you win prizes or become bestsellers, you can't control that. You really don't have any control over that at all. But what you 
can control is your next sentence and what you put down on that paper or on that screen. So if you can be healthy in your attitude towards writing and try and bear those things in mind and keep them at the forefront, then it really can improve your life. If you want to grow a career, if you want to have some success in this field, you need to be relentless. You need to keep on going through the rejection. You need to keep on going through all of the ups and downs that you will find along the way. So it's the most important piece of advice. Number seven, keep on keeping on. So I said this would be seven lessons, but I'm actually going to give you one extra piece of advice. And that is, well, you might be watching this video thinking, well, if she's read this book and she can give me the seven lessons from it. I don't need to read it. But my final piece of advice is that you need to read this book. This book is an absolute masterpiece in terms of telling you about the craft of writing. And Stephen King's a great storyteller. So just reading about his life and the things that he's been through and the way that writing has been a big part of that all the way along is extremely inspiring and really interesting so it's a very engaging book but most of all this is somebody who has made a really successful career in writing and he does have something to tell you about how to do that and I think it's probably the most important book I read when I was an emerging writer in terms of teaching me about the craft teaching me about the industry and teaching me about the attitude that I needed to succeed so that is my final my eighth lesson if you like you've got a bonus lesson and that is you need to read this book and it will help you a lot as a writer, I promise you.